Jin, whatever I do, I do it to protect you. So you understand? I understand. We're not trying to do this in a particularly arbitrary way. We've actually put a story group together that has very carefully looked at the narrative of all sorts of things we're doing, whether or not it's a saga film, it's one of the standalone films, it's a game, uh, even the narrative that exists inside the publishing that we do. We talk about all of it as a kind of connective piece so that we have a very, very clear idea of what these stories are, and not to set them up as sequels, but to have them inform those other stories, either in terms of a sense of place, the politics, where it falls within the mythological structure that, that George created. Those are all things that we take seriously, and we think the fans do too. They wanna feel as though there's a thoughtful process in connecting these stories. So that is something that we're, we're working very, very hard with. You wanna get out of here? Our rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. You think you might be able to help us? When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. Rogue One is really the story of a group of rebel fighters who go in to the most impenetrable landscape of the Death Star to steal the Death Star plans. And it's a harrowing journey and uh, an amazing action adventure story of what they're involved, what's involved in, in trying to, to get those plans. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right, how many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue, Rogue One. I think in large part, he not only loved the story and, and was a huge Star Wars fan, but he immediately saw the opportunity to stylistically approach the story in a way that you haven't really seen with Star Wars movies. And that's part of what we're also looking for, our directors and, and different talent that grew up on Star Wars and can come into the fold and offer opportunities to explore very different ways to tell these stories and yet still have them be Star Wars movies. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. You know, the more we look into creating these fantastic female stars inside of Star Wars, which really carry on from a tradition that George Lucas created when he put the feisty Princess Leia in New Hope and then that carried on for three movies. I think she's a real touchstone, certainly was then and, and continues to be with the casting of Daisy Ridley as Rey in, in Episode Seven, Force Awakens. And now Felicity coming into Rogue One is just fantastic. She's such a brilliant actress, and she brings a sense of gravitas and importance to anything that she does. And yet she, you know, there's a real whimsy to her, too. She has a great small, smile, a wonderful sense of humor, and, and she's, she's been fantastic. They have no idea we're coming. Take hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. the next chance and the next time. There's no question that the people who come and work with us on Star Wars have a real understanding and they care about it greatly and they want to share it with their families. That's part of the power of Star Wars is that 
ability to take something that meant so much to you as you were growing up, and, and it's still around. It's still something being explored, new stories are being told, and the, the idea that you can share that with members of your family, share that with your friends, it really brings back that great feeling of being able to go into the cinema and watch a movie where there's such a cross-section of people who all are really just having a fantastic good time. And that's, I think, what Star Wars represents is that feeling. And that's what parents and kids and everybody want to share all over the world.